In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we remember Mariano Tolentino, and uh, today as we um, return, so it's good for me to be back here at St. Thomas. I've been away for uh, a few days, so for anyone who's watching videos, they have to make do with some scenes from the Rocky Mountains as opposed to here at the church. So now we have this mass recorded again. And I, I know, at least from my perspective, I think it's been very helpful because there was really so much that was happening in the fall. And so I very much, I think, appreciated that, that break and that separation as well. So it's good to be back now and to return with a sense of vigor as we come back to ordinary time, uh, as we celebrate, especially the Saturday, and as we call upon the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. So we ask the Blessed Mother to watch over us and for her intercession as we confess our sins and seek the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, may rejoice in unfailing health of mind and body, and through the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, may we be set free from present sorrow and come to enjoy eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. There was a stalwart man from Benjamin named Kish, who was the son of Abiel, son of Zeror, the son of Becherath, son of Aphiah, a Benjaminite. He had a son named Saul, who was a handsome young man. There was no other child in Israel more handsome than Saul. He stood head and shoulders above the people. Now the asses of Saul's father Kish had wandered off. Kish said to his son Saul, take one of the servants with you and go out and hunt for the asses. Accordingly, they went through the hill country of Ephraim and through the land of Shalisha. Not finding them there, they continued through the land of Shalem without success. They also went through the land of Benjamin, but they failed to find the animals. When Samuel caught sight of Saul, the Lord assured him, This is the man of whom I told you. He is to govern my people. Saul met Samuel in the gateway and said, Please tell me where the seer lives. Samuel answered Saul, I am the seer. Go up ahead of me to the high places and eat with me today. In the morning, before dismissing you, I will tell you whatever you wish. Then, from a flask he had with him, Samuel poured oil on Saul's head. He also kissed him, saying, The Lord anoints you commander over his heritage. You are to govern the Lord's people, Israel, and to save them from the grasp of their enemies round about. This will be the sign for you, that the Lord has anointed you commander over his heritage. The word of the Lord. A responsorial song. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. O Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. In your victory, how greatly he rejoices. You have granted him his heart's desire. You refuse not the wish of his lips. 
Lord, in your strength the king is glad. For you welcomed him with goodly blessings. You placed on his head a crown of pure gold. He asked life of you. You gave him length of days forever and ever. Lord, in your strength the king is glad. Great is his glory in your victory. Majesty and splendor you conferred upon him. For you made him a blessing forever. You gladdened him with the joy of your face. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus went out along the sea. All the crowd came to him, and he taught them. As he passed by, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the custom post. Jesus said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed Jesus. While he was at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners sat with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many who followed him. Some scribes who were Pharisees saw that Jesus was eating with sinners and tax collectors and said to the disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Jesus heard this and said to them, Those who are well do not need a physician, but the sick do. I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we actually have the call of two different people. So the first reading we might say is the call of Saul to be king. Um, so we have this, uh, this vocation is revealed to him. And then, of course, in the gospel, we hear about Matthew or about Levi. Um, so the, uh, the tax collector who is called to be one of the apostles. One of the things that I think is interesting about these vocation calls is that it, it's not as though the person who is being called planned something in particular. Even we might say in, in a certain sense they were just going about their daily duties, and the Lord comes to meet them in the midst of the work that they are doing. So Saul was sent on a mission. So the, the asses of his father had wandered off, and so he was sent out to search for them. And so, and it's in the context of this search that this leads him on a journey that takes him to encounter Samuel. And if you read the entire ninth chapter of First Samuel, you'll hear that Samuel also receives a message from the Lord. And so the Lord is going to bring Saul and Samuel together by means of of Saul performing this duty, this duty that his father gives to him of searching out these lost assets. And in a certain sense, maybe sometimes these types of missions also kind of give a little foreshadowing, like maybe part of Saul's responsibility as king is going to be to look out for stubborn Israel that might sometimes wander off. Israel has so often has the tendency to wander off and what's Saul's job going to be but to bring them back. Unfortunately, Saul himself turns out to be about as stubborn as a mule in a few cases himself, and so he, he in fact, is going to fall from grace. So there might even be a little bit of foreshadowing here. But we think about Saul going out to search for these asses as a responsibility of, of him having to go out and call Israel back. We think about King David, who is a shepherd, who is called from the fields, and his job was going to be to shepherd the kingdom of Israel. Then we can turn to the gospel, and we hear about Matthew, or Levi, as he is called in the, in the passage today, and we hear about this call, then, of St. Matthew. And what is he doing? Well, he's a tax collector. That's a terrible profession. Well, when you stop and think about what he's doing, he's really helping to support, he's collecting taxes for the Roman Empire. So we might say he's helping by, uh, by receiving wealth, physical wealth, to build up an earthly kingdom, the kingdom that will be the Roman Empire. Jesus would call him to do something similar, but, this, but in spiritual terms. Rather than building up a worldly, uh, gathering worldly goods to build up an earthly empire, he, in fact, would be called to a heavenly duty to do spiritual works to build up the kingdom of God. 
Maybe there's a kind of an analogy there too. So that in each of these cases, we might say that God meets the person who is called and then calls them according to who they are. And, and we might say maybe transforms what they once were into something that is new, connected to the past, but transformed and changed, transformed from something that would be ordinary or earthly into something that's supernatural, spiritual, or heavenly. And this, I think, is a, is a great theme. Sometimes we talk about praying for vocations, and part of that is also meeting young men to encourage them to consider something that oftentimes they would not consider themselves. Remember what Saul said. He says, my, my tribe is the least of all of Israel. I'm the last person that you should think. And so often that's a, a very common thing that you'll hear is that um, sometimes young men might say, well, vocation, well, no, 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 someone else. It should be someone other than myself. Um, but this is where the Lord sometimes surprises us by choosing those who do not expect it, choosing them, meeting them where they are, and calling them to a transformation or a change, taking the gifts and skills they have, but reapplying them in a spiritual work. And I think that's maybe a good lesson for us. And especially as we pray for vocations, we want to encourage young men to not be afraid to go through that transformation, that change in which the Lord calls us. We also ask for the Blessed Mother's help as well, as, as the Blessed Mother was going about her duties and as she herself was called. She encountered that call and she willingly said yes. And so through her intercession, let us ask that those who are called to a special vocation of the priesthood or to consecrated life might be equally ready with the Blessed Mother to say yes to God's plan. We stand now to present our prayers and petitions. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church and the Holy People of God that we might be ready and attentive to the voice of the Lord that we, uh, as, he, as we encounter him. We pray to the Lord. Amen. As Saul was chosen as king, we pray for all of those who exercise governance over us in our civic society. That may they be guided by virtue and by integrity. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and to consecrated life, and for holy vocations. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray that we might follow the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary in her docility and in her humility. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the health of the sick, for the end of the pandemic, for the end of the spread of disease. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all the faithful departed that they may rest in peace, especially the deceased members of the Tolentino family for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the protection of our religious liberties as we say, St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who roam throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Almighty and merciful God, hear and answer these prayers that we make in faith, for we ask them through Christ our Lord.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace of his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we ask the prayers of your people with the sacrificial offerings, that through the intercession of Blessed Mary, the mother of your Son, no petition may go unanswered, no request be made in vain. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on, in veneration of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Daniel, our Bishop, and Lewis's assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive this heavenly sacrament, we beseech, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may, by imitating her, serve worthily the mystery of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, it was good to, to spend some time skiing. I keep wondering every time I go skiing, I says, this age catches up with me, will I start slowing down? Not yet. <laughs> so, I said, they, even as I keep going, they, it's, I've gotten... Um, increasingly confident and I would say that that happened even this year so I'm still making progress there so I take that as a good sign of vitality so I'm very appreciative of that uh, but it is also after kind of just some just good time just the cold crisp air in the mountains which is um, I think kind of rejuvenating and all of that uh, now to be back here and so we're very grateful to return please pray for Joan Adler um, she'll be laid to rest a little bit later today so we um, Remember her soul and all the souls of the faithful departed. And let us ask for the intercession of the Mother of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.